We've mashed it about an hour now. What we want to do is check for conversion. In order to confirm conversion, we can use iodine. Iodine in the presence of starch will turn black. Iodine in the presence of sugar will not change colors. So now Tyler's going to take a sample of his. I'm going to take a sample of mine, and let's see where we're at. For your sample, you notice that we're only taking a very small amount. No need to take a whole lot here. Just need one small drop. When it goes into your mash, it'll either go away or stay the same color or it'll turn black. If it turns black, you are not converted. You need to mash longer. If it goes away or stays clear, you're converted and you're ready to sparge. Yeah. Mine's clear, perfect example. Tyler, on the other hand, is still a rookie, so he's got a little, but perfect example. You can see that it's turning black there. Uh, the reason his is black is because starch is still present. In his recipe, he did have flaked corn, which does take a longer period of time to convert. So his needs more time mashing. Mine is ready to start sparging. See how black that turned? One of the steps that homebrewers often skip is checking for conversion in your mash. By adding a small amount of iodine, we can confirm that it has been converted. If you're not converted, you need to mash longer. If you skip this step, your thermometer may be off, your malt may have high proteins and not converting necessarily as quickly as you think. Here we've got a $2,000 brew system. It's not converted. Many people would start sparging and unfortunately would end up with a bad beer. Here we've got $150 brew system. We're converted, great. People start sparging, they'd be fine. But the idea here is if you do not check for conversion, you're not gonna get a quality batch of beer. Sparging is where you're rinsing the grains from the sugars. You wanna slowly do that. Um, and the best extraction rate is between the temperatures of 160 and 170. We've doughed in, we've mashed, we've checked our conversion with an iodine test. Now it's time to sparge. Sparging in a cooler is a little bit different than sparging in a kettle. First off, it's fairly difficult to mash out. Me, I prefer not to. I just sparge with hotter water without raising the temperature of my mash. So while you'll read for the most part to use 170 degree water with your mash, I'm gonna use 200 degree water because my mash is never gonna get up to that 170 degree point. Reason for using hot water, you're rinsing sugars out of grains. You think of honey in a t-shirt. If you took that t-shirt and just poured water over it quickly, that honey wouldn't come out. You need to continuously rinse with hot water in order to get that honey off of the t-shirt. On mine, with the igloo cooler, this is gonna be a manual process. I've heated my water to 200 degrees. I have a scoop. I slowly open up my ball valve to a slow rate. This flow rate, Shouldn't exceed five gallons every 30 minutes in a 10 gallon batch. And if you're going with a five gallon batch, you still want a one hour flow rate. So five gallons over 60 minutes. So take it slow, it should not come out very fast. You'll notice initially that your mash on top is cloudy. Eventually this is gonna turn clear. You'll be able to see where the grain bed is. You wanna maintain this water level to about one inch over the grain bed. Um, temporarily, you can feel it. <laughs> it's hot, but you can feel it. Uh, otherwise, you can wait for the sparge to come to that point. Sparging, you've got your hot water ready, you have your mash ready, keep track of it. You're brewing a 10 gallon batch, collect five gallons every 30 minutes. You should end up with about 70 to 75% efficiency in the cooler system. 